I'm Jessica. Welcome to Comic Con 2018. I'm gonna go inside and check out the artwork and share it with you today. I'm so excited. I've never been to Comic Con. It's my first time. The Jedi's have sensed us. It doesn't matter. Oh, oh, oh. It's the happy dreams. With Darth Vader in the background. <laughs> We're here with Travis, and he's got some really cool artwork here. I love this. I was wondering, what medium do you use? Uh, so I do pen and ink. Oh, okay. And so those were done in pen and ink. I colored them both in Photoshop uh -huh. or oh, digital. Okay. So a lot of it's digital coloring. But I also I do Copic for traditional coloring. Oh, okay. Which I just finished. That's beautiful. So that allows me to have some original pieces as, long, as well as the you know digital pieces too. Great. And uh, how long have you been coming to Comic Con as a vendor? Um, as a as an exhibitor or as an artist, um, I've been doing Comic Con for almost 16 years. Uh, I've been doing this for 21 years. It's been a pretty wild adventure. I, I love it. I, I couldn't have asked for something better. So I, I enjoy it. I like coming back. What got you inspired into the fantasy kids books? Ever since I was little, my parents, my, my mom was a big artist, and so she's always encouraged me to draw, and I'm really grateful for that. And so, as I got older, I just, I like telling stories. Um, the image where you saw the little boy fighting the dragon with the wooden sword, I mean, honestly, that was me and every other 10-year-old boy that's ever walked the face of the earth, battling their dragons, you know, with using their imagination. And as I got older, I realized that uh, as we become adults, that gets pulled away out of us. They don't want it, you know, people want us to conform or think a certain way or do a certain thing, and, and we, we lose that ability to be creative. And so my goal was to start bringing that back. I want to prove that you can still be creative. I want you, when you see that image, to motivate you to go, I can do anything. Or I was able to beat that dragon that I was when I was 10. I can still beat it. Nice. If you could give any advice to artists watching uh, that want to get to where you're at, what would you say? Well, I, I would give a couple of things. The first thing I would say is, how bad do you want it? You can't tell me how bad you want it, you have to show me. Uh, everybody talk is really cheap in this industry. It's all about drive. Second, what are you willing to give up? Uh, everyone likes to play video games or read books or whatever. I decided a long time ago I didn't want to be the guy that played the video games or just read the books. I wanted to be the guy that created them. So, be willing to give stuff up. I don't see. I don't get to see a lot of movies these days because I'm working. The other thing is, is like when you go to a convention, bring your sketchbook. Don't come up and say I just want to be an artist. Let me see what you're doing. Then I can help you meet other people in the industry that might be able to give you a better direction. So that would be the. And then the last thing is literally just you're gonna fail. So you get back up and you try it again and then you fail again and then you get back up and try it again and it might be expensive but you just got to learn to push through it and I've had books that have bombed and that cost me a lot of money but then I have other books that have just gone through the roof so it's not giving up. Excellent advice. Thank you. Thank you. I really love your work. I have been a love of fantasy my whole life too and this is beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Anytime. Thank you for having me. I work almost exclusively in watercolor. Oh, okay. Cool. So these are all originals? Yep. Wow. That's nice. I like having an original anyone can afford. Everybody uh -huh. should be able to acquire original art at some level. That's so good. this is my little popcorn project. I'm Jessica. Welcome to Comic Con 2018. Today I'm dressed as my childhood superhero, Xena Warrior Princess. <laughs> John, and I'm really impressed by your work. I see that you do artwork for like magic and Warcraft as well. Yes, I do. If you had any advice for artists out there, what would you say? 
Oh, wow. There's a lot. There's a lot. Uh, let's see. Uh, first and foremost is uh, to... If it's... Don't worry about how talented you are. And that's, I see a lot of people that, that they, they think if they're not the best drawer or they're not the best at something, that they give up really fast. And, and that, you can't do that. I mean, you know, talent is a myth, in my opinion. I think a lot of it is is really putting in the hours and hours and hours of working on it. Um, and, and the other thing that, that, that I think a lot, I see a lot of artists make a mistake of, is they're not willing to take help. You know, it, it, I can do it myself mentality. Um, I think there's always a point in somebody's career where somebody has carried them, whether it be you know, uh, a parent, an aunt, an uncle, a spouse, a loved one, where they've given them the space to be able to create and be able to grow and be able to do that. And a lot of times I see um, artists don't take advantage of that. Um, they, you know, I, I've got friends, and I don't want to name any names, but they moved back in with mom and dad. And that allowed them to really grow as an artist. And you know, if you, as long as you're not afraid to do those kind of things, those, those are probably the two biggest things. How did you get inspired to do the fantasy? I was a geek. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I, I the, the thing, I started with D&D &D with the Red Fox. All right. And, and that was where it all started for me. And so I was tracing Larry Elmore's stuff. And then, and then eventually I was tracing Adam, uh, Arthur Adams' comic books back in the day and stuff like that. And so that's how it all started with me with X-Men and the Red Box. And I never dreamed that I could ever actually be doing this stuff. If my stuff would be in the books, to me that's crazy. To me, my stuff's actually in the DD book, I still can't have it. So yeah, that's, that's how it is. Yeah, so I'm just curious, how did you get in contact with like, Magic and D&D? The way I did it was, uh, for D&D and for Magic, I went to Gen Con, uh, and I knew that they would always have art directors there, and they still do, they always have art directors there to review portfolios. And the first year I went, I showed my portfolio, it was horrible, it was <laughs> awful, I thought it was great, but it wasn't, and I know that now. Um, but they obviously saw something in it because they gave me a lot of advice. Uh, obviously they didn't hire me, but they said, here's the things you want to work on. And the best part was, is I went back and then I worked on those things. And then I went back the next year and they remembered me. And then I was like, I could actually show them and say, hey, I worked on these six things you told me to do. I threw everything away that you had told me to get rid of. I got rid of it. And I had five new pieces to show them. And they were like, wow, this is great. You did this in one year. I'm like, yeah, this is what I did in one year. And so they were really impressed. And so the D&D people said, okay, we'll give you a little bit of work. Magic, Jarvis, who was in charge of Magic, said, nope. <laughs> and then and then I kept showing him work. Then I started getting D&D work, and I did that for about four years. But every year, I'd show my work to Jarvis, and he would say, nope, 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 for every year until finally, I finally broke through, and he finally said, all right, I'll try you out. And so he gave me a card, and the rest, I guess, like I said, the rest is history. He just started giving me more work and more work. And, um, and, he, and they're fantastic, because the best thing is, if an art director sees potential in you and you're willing to work hard, even though they may not be hiring, they're going to tell you what you, they need to see from you. Um, because, you know, they want to see you grow. And the big, as, as long as you're willing to take that advice and grow with it, there's nothing better to prove to them that you're going to be easy to work with. And so anytime an artist can do that, that's another piece of advice I give any artist. If an art director look at your portfolio and they say, you need to get better with hands, if in a year you can come back and show them, hey, I've spent a year working on hands, here's five new pieces where I get better hands, they love that because they're like, you took my advice and you listen and you work hard on it because too many of us turn into prima donnas. Um, and don't take advice from art directors, not willing to you know, change our art for you know, like, That's Makes sense. Persistence. Yeah. Well, yes. Yeah. That's excellent. Uh, so, do you? I see some of your sketches over here. Do you start with a sketch and then actually paint all of them, or are some digital as well? It's all digital. Oh, it's all digital. Uh, it's okay. all digital. I start with a pencil oh. sketch. I start with a pencil sketch, and then I scan that into the computer. 
computer, and then I do a value study on top of that. And then after I do the value, that's what I send in the art director is usually the value study. Um, and then get the uh, once I get the approval from there, then I go back in, take it into Photoshop, and then after Photoshop, then I usually run it through Painter, blend off the edges just to make it look like more like an oil painting. It does so much. So, yeah. You convinced me. I'm an oil oh, painter. Wonderful. I, I thought they. Oh, were thank painting. you. I really appreciate that's that. That's great. That's that's great. But but yeah, that's that's how I do it. Is, is Painter has a great ability to blend the edges that Photoshop just can't quite get yet. Um, and so that's why I use Painter to finish it. And then my last question is, I'm curious about like copyright and like the legal side of things. Sure. What advice would you give for artists? As far as uh, getting your own copyright stuff, um, if you're ever worried about somebody stealing your work, if that's what you're asking, um, one of the pieces of advice I got um, was from Dan Santos. Uh, he's an amazing artist, amazing guy, super, super cool guy. But one of the things he said was, is if you take your uh, take all your work, put it into a book, publish the book through Lulu, then mail the book to yourself so that it has a stamp on it and it has a time stamp on it, then don't open the envelope because it's federal sealed and everything. If anybody ever says, hey, I painted that before you, you can just take that book into the judge, hand it to the judge, say it's a sealed envelope, and yeah, you win every time. So if you're ever worried about somebody stealing your work, that's a good way to do it. Um, but in today's day and age, you know, it, I think everybody's going to have something to in the future. You just have to, you know, as long as, I, I, I wouldn't get too bent out of shape mm -hmm. if, it's, if it was me. So, sure. Yeah. Well, that's great advice. Yeah. And I really appreciate you letting us do this interview. Of course. It's an honor to meet you. Oh, uh, thank you. And uh, I'm a big fan. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Jess, there's a giant dinosaur coming up over your shoulder. Oh, that's great. I'm here with Heather and Caitlin, and they are some fantastic artists making really beautiful oil paintings. Uh, I was wondering, Seventeen years. Seventeen years. Wow. Yeah. With your experience at Comic Con, what's something you would tell other artists? Like some advice you'd give them? My advice to anybody is keep working, work, 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 work some more, and don't give up on yourself because there's a, there's a spark of goodness that got you there. So you just have to keep working until you get to where you want to be. What inspires you? Uh, one of my main inspirations is just my love for creating something. I love to create things and I love to get into that moment of, oh my gosh, this is going so well. I just feel the piece falling in and not necessarily collapsing, but it just falls all into place. And that's when I really start absolutely just getting into my zone and realizing, yes, this is why I create because I feel so good when a piece is coming together nicely. Inspiration is life. Life experience is what drives most of my paintings. Um, and observing the details and the beauty of the world around me. Like, I find everything beautiful. Just open your eyes and you'll find it. So, Some of your work reminds me of Alphonse Bucca. Is he like He's an favorite? absolute yeah. favorite. Yep. Yeah. He's a very strong my, influence my on my work. Yep. I love it. Absolutely. That's great. Um, well, thank you girls so much for letting me interview you. I really appreciate it. If he likes it, should he put a ring on it? No! <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with Dave, and he's got some amazing paintings here behind us. I was wondering, how many times have you been at Comic Con? I've been coming to Comic Con longer than I like to tell you. It was in dates, but um, probably right about the time my son was born, so it's easy to keep track of. I'm thinking 24 years. Nice! Yeah. Wow. And, I mean, well, your work is stunning. It's, I, I can see you're a master. How long have you been painting? Uh, you know, I've been making art since I was this tall. And I went to school for architecture and fine art. Oh, okay. And then practiced architecture for 10 years and decided to go ahead and make a career shift. Maybe, you know, back 24 years ago. Uh, Comic Con was one of the first places I went to go try to find a professional work. Awesome. If you had any advice, 
advice for artists that want to get to this level, what would you say? Um, you know, just keep practice, practice, practice. If I go, if I go look at the work that I did 24 years ago, it's embarrassing, typically. So I would also advise you to, to uh, destroy all the work that you're embarrassed by <laughs> so that you can't be dug up in the future and prove that you were not, you know, born fully formed. <laughs> so. That's cool. And so I see you've got your oil paintings behind us. And then you work digitally as well? Sure. Okay. In fact, even my oil paintings have planned out digitally okay. to a crazy extent just to make sure it's exactly what I want. About how many hours does it take to make something like this? I, you know, at any given piece, I would say I want two and a half, three weeks. Okay. Start to finish. Yeah. But it depends. I mean, there are, there are times you have a client that wants to see four or five very different concepts. And then if they, sure. don't, if they don't pick one of those on the first go, it's sort of like you restart that process until yeah. you get a yes. Yeah. And then you go to finish. And when I go to finish on one of these, it's probably two weeks. Yeah. What inspires you? Like, why did you choose the fantasy and sci-fi? Um, I've always been a sci-fi fantasy nut. Star Wars played a big role for me. I was a teen and saw the first movie. It was pretty influential. Um, Fantasy, I kind of fell into you later as I had clients who were already publishing both and decided they wanted me to try some fantasy work, so some went that way. Um, I've done very little superheroes, although I just did this uh, Black Panther for Marvel um, a year before the movie came out. I couldn't show it until the movie came out. So, um, but it's great, actually, I find variety keeps it all fresh and interesting. Like if I were doing only one thing, it would probably drive me nuts. Sure. So, you know, whatever. I, I, uh, I do advertising stuff for theme parks. It's very different, but mostly digital. Um, but whatever you do, you learn from that and take what you learn back into your other work. And it's so it all kind of cross fertilizes and makes it, everything stronger from uh, diversity. Well, it's been a real honor yeah. to get to interview you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Zena. <laughs>
creator, I want to be a writer and an illustrator, and I want to create my own content. I want that to be something that no one has ever seen or experienced before. And then, you know, breaking it down detail to detail. I mean, I know some people kind of argue that the devil is in the details. However, I think when one really starts to refine something, rather than adding a bunch of unnecessary detritus to something, I think that's when it starts to get convoluted. And when you start pulling away, that's when you begin to examine detail in its most precise form and its most pure form. And that's when you can really start to crystallize the goal properly and aim for it. And when you really start to focus on that once again, then you know, you're know you able to ask the right questions and ask the right people for help or even introduce yourself to the right people who are going to further you in your career because you'll be in line with them. And I feel like that's probably one reason why you and I have remained friends for so long. You know, it's like we've both had really clear goals of who we are and what we want, and we were both really driven to evolve however that was going to take place. But there was still always a very clear thread within the both of us as far as, like, you know, there was never a question of the work ethic, you know what I mean? And also wanting to connect with people. And that's a really beautiful thing, too. And then, again, seeing how it's evolved into you really maximizing your talent and how, you know, incredible you are and how you're able to give that to other people. That, I think, you know, just shows how you developed so much in your own space. You know what I mean? And again, like, being really grateful to have you in my life for as long as I have been, it just makes completely it makes perfect sense to me. People are there are bing 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 zing 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 for the strong yes. all my work is done in ink so it's in, usually ink wash meaning that I water down ink and use it in watercolor with watercolor technique um, and then I either finish colors in watercolor or a little bit of digital tinting yeah, okay yeah. your process looks really awesome that's you on the table. How long have you been an artist? Like basically all my life. So oh, I've been drawing since basically since I could hold a pencil. So uh -huh. I um, remember sitting next to my dad as like a three-year-old at the art at the uh, art desk, just mm -hmm. working with watercolors and sketching with them. And, so I started seriously drawing when I was about like 13, and that's when I started learning how to paint. But I kind of abandoned water with those for a really long time um, until I decided I wanted to get into kids' books. And the first one that I did when I was like, okay, it has to be uh, watercolor. And just that is the style that I want. I, I love the soft colors, but I also love how vibrant they can be, and they just they have so much character to them. So the first book that I did, I redid it um, like four times from like beginning to end, drawing it, inking it, watercoloring it, starting it over because I learned so much by the time oh, I got to the end. And it's sure. like, I, I'm better now. I That's a good process. Yeah. <laughs> it was exhausting and demoralizing, but it, by the time I was finished with it, it turned out a lot better. And then the next ones that came along, I just I experimented with new techniques and got a little bit more relaxed with them and more confident with them. And, uh, yeah. Do you write them as well? Yep. Cool. What medium do you work in? Uh, it's drawn in pencil and then uh, colored oh, okay. on the computer. So okay. you can see the originals here. Interesting. What's something you've learned coming uh, to Um, It's a marathon. Yeah. It's a lot of fun.
I'm here with Danny and John, and they are two artists at Comic Con. They both have really beautiful work, and I just want to ask them some questions. So, uh, what medium do you guys work in? Uh, I generally work uh, in digital, uh, so I use Photoshop. Um, I do work in traditional, and I use ink and graphite and stuff as well. Oh, okay. Digital as well. Pretty much the same thing. All of my stuff is digital. I do like painting in oil and wash and watercolor on my free time, but all this stuff here is, is digital. Uh -huh. What got you guys into the the DC like or um, the fantasy scene? The fantasy scene. Oh, yeah. um, well, I mean, like for art in general. I mean, like these ones down here. Those are inspired by Harry Potter. Like okay. You know, these nice. ones are Zelda. So it's like kind of a mixture of video games and no. movies. The Stranger Things one is pretty cool too. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so you just you're painting what you love. Yeah, like, yeah, pretty much. Pretty that's much. that's cool. I do the I same. I play Guild Wars too. Yeah, and yeah. then I'm like I played a lot. I gotta paint crystals now. Yeah, There's there just so go. many beautiful crystals. Yeah. <laughs> and then how about you? Like what made you go into like reproducing famous uh, it's cartoons? Basically things I grew up with. Uh, uh -huh. so it's like a lot of these animated uh -huh. shows that I grew up watching or even when I was younger reading comics. So yeah. just kind of cool. reproducing that. And now shows that I love, like Stranger Things and Breaking Bad. Uh, is this a, your guys' first time coming on? Second, second, second year? Second, second this year. is uh, our second year tabling. Uh -huh. This will be my sixth time at Comic-Con. Okay, oh, yeah. cool. Yeah. Oh, what's something you've learned here at Comic-Con over the years? Uh, I'm assuming it's starts at a different everybody. time. Conan's giant face. Here we are at the convention center, downtown San Diego, at Comic Con 2018. Got the Coronado Bridge off in the distance. Jessica Siemens bringing you painting lessons online from Comic Con. Best in precious metals. Sand <laughs> Trooper Investments. 